In a previous episode I demonstrated this model stamper battery that I built and the key in here is the cams that lift the ha hammers up and it drops the hammers on the quartz crushing it to extract the gold. The design of these cams uses an involute curve which is actually quite common in engineering projects. It was actually developed by um, Archimedes 300 BC so it has been around for 2300 years at least. It was actually known as, as Archimedes spiral but now more commonly known as the involute of a circle. It is based on a circle at the center rather than some other shape. It is uh, being generated here in this example by uh, wrapping a piece of string around a pillar and as the pencil is moved around the string wraps or unwraps on the pillar and thus the radius is constantly changing resulting in a spiral and because the change is constant it is ideal for lifting these hammers so that it is lifting the hammers at a constant rate and therefore the load on the power supply is also constant cams have two arms each with basically half a spiral on each one and uh, so I went through several different modifications and so did the actual early gold miners too they there are several different designs you see on different machines but they're all based on this involute curve now I decided it was rather difficult to hold the pencil perfectly upright and get a good curve so I decided it may be worth doing the same thing using technical drawing techniques these days people don't use technical drawing very much because they're using CAD systems so I decided to get pencil and paper out and do it the old way I was taught by my father in technical drawing classes and that's what this program is about is how to uh, generate this curve by using drawing methods. So that's the height of the cam lift and we're going to divide this into eight segments and work out how far the cam will lift every eighth of a, a lift. So we want to divide this line into eight segments and this is the way we do it with technical drawing. Draw a vertical line and now draw another line that can be any arbitrary angle, anything that can be conveniently divided up into eight segments because we're going to we want to divide this height of the cam into eight. So I decided I'd have divisions of one centimeter along this line so I made the line eight centimeters long and it's intersected right here. We drop vertical lines, or actually lines that just uh, are parallel to this uh, vertical line. In fact, if we had drawn it differently, that line wouldn't necessarily be vertical, actually. Uh, but as long as they're, they're parallel and intersect with the um, horizontal line at the bottom, we'll be able to divide it like this. So now we have these eight lines equally dividing this the line that we started with up into eight segments and so the distance between any two lines is going to be one eighth of the cam lift and that's the distance that we want to use on our next diagram so we'll start a new diagram but we'll use this this length here the eighth of a cam lift now that was just a little warm-up in technical drawing now we're getting into the real nitty-gritty let's start by putting in a horizontal line and a vertical line, a bit like drawing a graph. Now this vertical line is going to be the axis of the camshaft. So we're going to draw a circle on there and that circle is the generating circle of the involute curve. That is if you were doing it by tying a piece of string onto a bar and rotating it around that would be the size of the bar that you're using to generate the curve. Next we'll add a vertical line on the edge of that circle that represents the position of the stem shaft. From there we'll put another vertical line on the other side and we'll draw a big circle. Now this is just a, a circle of any diameter that is used for constructing all the lines that we need to make so it's not actually part of the machine although that, that center circle is, does represent the inner core of the cam. Now I decided that we'll need to have the cam operate over only part of a circle uh, this, this cam actually has two arms so the maximum it can be is 180 degrees but if you did that uh, the hammer wouldn't have time to drop between coming to the top of one cam and then uh, dropping and then coming back onto the next cam so we need a little bit of a gap between them so I decided to make that gap 135 degrees going anti-clockwise round to 135 degrees on the left 
So we draw a, draw a chord here um, across to that 30, uh, 135 degree mark and measure its length and make another chord over here. And we're going to use this to divide uh, the motion around the central circle into eight segments. So we draw a tangent from the edge of the circle, uh, of the inner circle, the um, generating circle, to the outer circle. We add a line at right angles to it, which is the marks the end of the of the rotation on this other segment. It's a little bit confusing, but we've got a segment here that we're going to be dividing up. And we want to divide it up into equal segments. So we'll make a convenient line here that we can divide up into eight, a bit like we did with the previous drawing, and we could make that eight centimeters long and then divide it up into eight bits. So here's our eight little dots. Ideally, these dots should be arranged in a circular pattern rather than a straight line. So this is an approximation. And we do a similar thing on this side. We'll draw a line there and divide it up into eight. Now we number the divisions across the top line as well by placing dots at equal distances along that line. And we'll number those as well. Now we'll can draw a line from the center out to item number seven out here to look at the next tangent. That's the radial uh, line and we want to make a tangent to that so it needs to be at right angles to this number seven line. So, and we carry on up the line, do another radial line and it's tangent. So these are uh, creating the tangents all the way along. So we have eight tangent lines. Now we're going to have to work out the actual curve. This is the final step of making the curve. And we'll use some little red dots to mark the points here. So we'll I'll put them all in at once. And uh, perhaps we can zoom in here. Remember in the previous diagram we worked out what one eighth of the lift was. Now we take that distance with a pair of dividers and step it out on here. So I've already drawn these dots in, but the way they are drawn is that you take the one eighth of a, the length of the lift, maybe set it on a pair of dividers so you can uh, step it out on these lines. And in the first line, it should have gone up the first one eighth. So you go up the number one tangent line and make dot number one. Then you switch to tangent line number two and go up to the second dot. And then you go to tangent line number three and place the third dot. Then we go to tangent line number four and step out the correct distance and that's the fourth dot. And then we go to line number five and add its dot again at the right, same, same distance. Following the same pattern we go to line number six and place the sixth dot. Then at line number seven and place this dot. And line number eight and place this dot and they should be all equally spaced. Perhaps I haven't got it quite perfect there actually. And once we've done all that we've done all our eight dots and we can now run a curve through it. And there we finally have our curve. Let's just turn off all of these construction lines so now you can see what the curve really looks like. So finally there's our involute curve and that's just one half of the cam so we now need to um, reproduce that curve on the other side rather than go through all that construction again. I decided to transfer this onto another sheet of paper by poking a pin through two sheets of paper. So I just made pinholes at each one of these red dots and it transferred the image onto the next sheet. And that's what it looks like after the pin bricks have been transferred onto another sheet and the page flipped over. So now I've got the other half of the curve. And this can actually be used to actually uh, produce the cam. So I want to make a, um, a pattern for the cam out of this aluminum sheet or aluminum sheet. So I used this latex glue to glue the sheet, glue the piece of paper onto the sheet of aluminium and then I just used tin snips to cut out the shape, file it out. So I cut around here and made this cam. This is a pattern for the cam. So look out for the next video when we actually make the cams on the lathe, which is interesting. And just so that you don't miss it, you can click a like and notify button, hit the bell so that it reminds you. And while you're on the job, consider going to Patreon as well.
Yep. And uh, by all means, uh, add some comments and let us know what you think.